Hi, I'm Skip Fidel, and today I'm here to talk to you about installing the Aspect Peel and Stick Stone Backsplash Tile. Now, when we think about installing backsplash tile in our kitchen, usually that involves a wet saw or tile cutting tool. It involves mortar and grout and a trowel. And if you don't know how to do all that or have all of those tools, of course you're gonna to have to pay somebody to come in that's skilled and get the job done. Now the beauty of the Aspect Peel and Stick Tile is that it's just that. It's peel the back off of it and stick it on the wall. The process couldn't be easier and just about anybody can do it with very limited tools. So today we're gonna to talk about all the preparation that's required before getting your installation started and then we're gonna move right into the job. There are two easy methods to install Aspect Peel and Stick Tiles, both of which you can find on their complete installation guide at aspectideas.com. The ideal surface to adhere your Aspect Peel and Stick Tile to would be a smooth, clean, flat, dry wall. Now before you get started, you're going to want to fill in any imperfections and high and low spots with spackle, give it a light sanding, and then apply a fresh coat of latex primer to adhere it to. Now in method number one, after doing those preparation steps, you can simply peel off the back of the Aspect Peel and Stick Tile and stick it right to the freshly primed wall. If you don't want to do those prior preparation steps like the sanding and priming, you can use method number two. You'll still have to peel off the back of the Aspect Tile, but before sticking it to the wall, you're going to want to dot on some additional construction adhesive to help it stick. Alright, so now that the wall preparation is complete, let's talk about some of the tools that you'll need to get the job done right. If you're using method number two, you'll want to be sure to have a caulk gun to apply that construction adhesive. Now to cut the Aspect Peel and Stick tiles is actually very simple. You can use a table saw, a miter saw, and be sure if you're using these power tools you have proper eye protection and of course a dust mask. And if you don't have the power tools, a simple set of quality hand shears works just fine. You'll need a utility knife, chisel, file, flexible putty knife, a square or speed square, tape measure, pencil, and lastly, a level. Before you start installing the tile to the wall, it's always a good idea to take all of the product out of its packaging and lay it out on a flat surface, either on the floor or the countertop. This will give us a chance to acclimate to room temperature, as well as giving you an opportunity to check for color consistency and any imperfections that might be in the product. This is also a great time for you to lay it out to see if you have enough product to actually get the job done before you begin. So now that we're going to begin our installation to the wall, in a subway design, which is what we're going to be doing, a staggered design, I always like to start in the corner and work our way out. So dry fitting, leaving the protective film on the back first, we're going to place our tile in place, take our next tile and set it right next to it. Now our next course of tile we're going to want to stagger that joint, meaning that this one is going to start in the middle of this seam. So we'll have a half a tile cut here and then begin our next course. It's always good to dry fit everything first with the protective film on because there's a very aggressive adhesive on the back of this tile. And I can tell you, once you stick it to the wall, it doesn't want to come off. So dry fit it, measure it, get your cuts done first before you start peeling and sticking. Once you're ready to start peeling and stick, just take off the adhesive back and start with your first tile. And again, we're going to start right in the corner and work our way out. We're going to peel off the adhesive backing. Now this is kind of important because this adhesive again is very, very strong. So the proper way to do this is we're going to want to start putting it in on an angle like this, about a 30 degree angle, not flat to the wall because once you stick it flat to the wall, it's not going to be able to slide and adjust. We'll get it to where we want to stick it. And on that angle, once we have it in place, we know it's good. Then we can press it up against the wall and apply pressure. And now that tile is stuck in place and we're ready to move on to our next tile. That's it. There's no mortar, there's no glue, there's no grouting. It's peel it and stick it on the wall. Couldn't be any easier. We have our short wall complete, notched around the outlet. I'll be showing you how to make those cuts in just a moment. We're going to get started installing our long wall. Same process. So we're going to put it in place on an angle. This will allow us to move it from side to side. Get the joint tight right up against the corner. Make sure it's tight against down to the stone. Press our corner in. And there we have our first course. We're continuing our process all the way down through. Always coming in on an angle so we can butt these two joints up nice and tight. So we want this seam on the bottom and this seam here always to be a nice tight seam. 
Once we get that started, we can work our way down, always applying it down to the countertop and then even pressure all the way through. As I mentioned earlier, the adhesive on the back of these peel and stick tiles is very aggressive. And when it goes onto the wall, it's designed to stay there. Now that's a good thing, but when it comes to removing the tiles, it can make it a little bit difficult. So if you find that a tile is out of line, you'll want to warm it up with a blow dryer and then use a flexible putty knife to get behind it and peel it off the wall. Now keep in mind, when you take this tile off the wall, it may damage some of the paint primer on the wall. It may also peel off some of the backing on the tile. So you may or may not be able to reuse this tile. If it does have anything stuck to the back of it, you might want to use some of that additional construction adhesive or use a new tile when it comes time to replace it. Now we're getting ready to start our second course. And as you can see, the first one looks fantastic. We started our first course with a full piece out of the corner. So that means our second course is going to start with a half a piece because we always want to stagger these joints or subway style brick pattern. So we'll come over back to our full piece. We'll measure it and cut it at the halfway point, marking our line and take our either one of our straight edge a square, a speed square also works great for this. Come back with our shears and taking our time to cut it nice and straight. Now you can see we have a nice straight cut edge. This is our factory edge, meaning this is the edge that was cut perfectly square and straight from the factory. So when we're putting our joints together with our next piece, we always want to make sure the factory goes together with the factory. It's always going to give us a nice tight seam. The cut edge, as straight as you might get it, is never going to be as perfect as that factory machine cut. So we're going to want to put this cut edge back into the corner, leaving our factory edge facing out to meet up with our next piece. Now we come to a place where we're going to have to make some notch cuts around this receptacle. So the easiest way to do that is to take our next piece, we're going to put it up against where it needs to go with that butt joint. Once we slide that in and make sure we're making contact with this butt joint right here, we can easily see where this box is and mark the left and right side of where we'll have to cut. Now we're going to come to this side and we want to mark the height of the cut. So again, we'll line up this joint here and we'll mark the top and the bottom we're going to need to connect these marks. So the easiest way to do that is to draw the lines down on each mark. We have our left and our right marks. And now we're going to connect with our top mark and bottom mark. So we'll have to transfer these measurements over to here. So making sure that we're square, start our mark here. And there's no reason to draw this line all the way across. We're going to be marking inside of this area that we're cutting. Let's come down to our bottom mark. And same thing. We're going to transfer that line right here. Now we can go ahead and continue that bottom mark. We'll know where that cut bottom is on the bottom. And we know where the mark is on the top. And there you have the exact location of that receptacle cutout. Now, as you can see, we're going to have a little piece left in the top. So we we'll want to make sure those pencil marks are gone. And this is a little bit more of a difficult cut because we're in the middle of the piece. I like to take a utility knife and score it a couple of times on each side. Be sure you have something underneath to protect the surface that you're working on all the way around. We'll take our chisel and put it right on the line that we just scored with the knife. And we're actually making a plunge cut. And there you have it, our receptacle hole cut right in the middle of the tile. Now with our protective film still on the back, we're going to put it over our receptacle, check the butt side, check the long side joints. Everything fits nice and snug around our receptacle. And we're ready to go ahead and peel the back off and stick it into place. So now we come to a piece where we'll have to make another notch. So this is a little bit different type. It's just an L cut out of this tile. Mark the window on the right side and then we're going to hold it right in place here and mark our height. And once we get those two measurements, we can go ahead and just connect those dots and cut that piece and bring it over to our cutting station and we can connect these two points with a straight edge. And then we have our right side cut 
And once we get those two points measured out, now we can take that piece out with our snips. So starting with the right side cut, taking our time to make a nice straight cut, and that's going to be going up against the molding. And now we're going to be making the long cut all the way down the line. All right. We're going to dry fit it and make sure our cuts don't need to be adjusted. Make sure our factory seams and everything line up nice and tight. That's a pretty nice cut if I do say so myself. Once we know the fit is good, same process. We're going to peel off our protective film on the back and now we are ready to go. So again, we're going to always put it in on an angle. Make sure our seams are tight before we press it to the wall. Tight on the corner on the factory side. Tight on the bottom. And there we go. Nice tight fit. There we have it, a beautiful stone backsplash installed in just one afternoon. For the complete instruction guide along with a list with all the other Aspect products, check out their website at aspectideas.com.